Okay. You want to start, Alexis, or do you want me to start? Start. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for coming and joining our meeting on this fun Wednesday night. So this meeting is going to focus on making a healthy recipe that's based with a uh, college staple ramen. And we have the wonderful Dr. Baum from the Center for Human Nutrition joining us today to help lead this for us. So. So thanks to the Exercises Medicine RSO and Alexis for inviting me. Um, I went a little bit crazy after Alexis and I demoed some recipes for practice yesterday. So I think what we'll start with is I made some slides and we'll go through those and then we'll demo a couple um, easy recipes and ideas. And um, while that's work, uh, while Alexis is getting that up, I will say, um, I don't really have it explicitly stated here, but one of the things I was thinking about when we talk about, it's called healthier ramen, because there's a couple things I learned in preparing this slide about ramen noodles that I don't know if they'll ever be like super healthy. Um, but I focused on things that were pretty um, poor in the American diet. So we tend to eat too much sodium, too much saturated fats, and we don't meet our fruits and vegetable servings, and we eat a lot of calories. So some of the tips that we found online will help target these, these goals. I think Alexis, can you do the next slide? Okay, so um, ramen noodles, they're quick, they're easy, they're delicious, they're super cheap. So the ones I found, I actually found a couple more, so this changes a little bit, range from 15 cents to $1.50. And I went to Aldi, Walmart, and Harps. Um, and they come in so many flavors and so many formats. So this one here actually is my favorite flavor, is kimchi flavor. Um, I only found it in the bowl, but I can get it for 20 cents a pack off this um, website called Yummy Bazaar, which has a bunch of like Korean and Asian snacks. Um, so they make it in bowls and these would be closer to $1 or $2. And one bowl has around 360 calories. You can get tons of flavors in these packs. So there's soy sauce, which was just highly recommended to me by um, someone who works in the food processing industry. You can get chili flavored shrimp, chicken, creamy chicken, spicy chicken. And these are the ones that range from like about 15 to 25 cents. Then I actually found this version um, called spring onion. It was in the Thai aisle. This was a dollar and it has 170 calories. And I got these different varieties because I think it's important when we're talking about healthy to think about calories. So one of these packages is two servings according to the nutrition facts panel. And I'll show you that in a second. So if you eat half the package as prepared, it's around 170 to 190 calories. And then the entire package becomes closer to 360 to 400 calories. Um, I also found new exciting flavors, Korean barbecue. So this one I think was around a dollar and this has around 370 calories and 13 grams of fat. So they all hit these same nutrition benchmarks all around 400 calories. If you eat the whole package all around like 10 to 14 grams of fat. Oh, Tilly shaking her head. She is like, you are not right. Um, <laughs> and then, um, but they all have a ton of sodium. And so, um, and then I also found this one, which is in the refrigerated aisle I had never seen before. And so this one only has around 160 calories. So I, I picked up these two because these have similar quick cooking times. They're still $2 or less, but they have a lot less calories and fat. So one is the Thai one and one is an udon noodle one. And so um, I guess you can go to the next slide, Alexis. So the, I was just talking about the nutrition information and I found this, I forgot to put the website, but I just Googled um, ramen nutrition information and it's really hard to find on the ramen noodle manufacturer website. But um, one of these like Livestrong type websites actually um, had this posted and where you see the red exclamation points, those are nutrients where we should be concerned. So you can see this one has high saturated fat and it's going on half a pack of noodles so a half a pack would have three and a half grams of saturated fat, which Americans already have too much in our diet. 
And if you ate the whole pack, it would be 14 grams of fat and um, seven grams of saturated fat. So half the fat is saturated. Um, and it has a ton of sodium. So half a pack has 830 milligrams of sodium and a full pack would have around 1600. And I would say that's true for almost every single package of ramen noodles sitting here. So one of the things these recipes we decided to prepare tonight or demo um, help cut some of that sodium. And I will say before I forget, so we, I think we all love ramen because it's cheap and tasty, but you can also buy a package of spaghetti for a dollar. The Great Value brand is a dollar and it comes in like thin or thick and there's eight servings here. And that's only gonna be 200 calories with only one gram of fat and no saturated fat and um, no sodium. And this actually has seven grams of protein in a serving. And then another option, I'm gonna, we're not gonna talk about it today, but I thought I would throw it in there because I did this for my son for lunch today, are mac and cheese. So you can buy mac and cheese anywhere ranging also from 15 cents a pack to a dollar a pack. Um, and you can take some of the same tips. You can either just use the noodles or mix in things like frozen vegetables or proteins to make it a more complete meal. Okay. And I think for these, they still have five grams of protein. Oh, and one reason I did find out, because I was talking to one of my good friends who works in the frozen fruits and vegetables industry. And I was sitting there and I said, I just can't figure out how do they get 14 grams of fat in those tiny seasoning packets? And she looked at me like I came from another planet and she said, they fry the noodles. So actually, and Dr. Howie is like, yeah. <laughs> so they dump these in the fryer to make them, and that's what helps them cook quick when you put them in the pan. So when I was trying to figure out ways to reduce the saturated fat in top ramen, um, I think we're stuck with it. So what we can do is dilute it out, I guess, and add more nutrients. Um, so what's on the next slide, Alexis? So this is just using this um, Marashan flavor. So they got a health grade of C minus, so it's worse than your average food product. I put the ingredients on there so you could start to see, um, so the flour for the noodles is first, but then the vegetable oil they fry it in is the second ingredient. And you can see there's a lot of things that contain salt. And a lot of that is probably to preserve these products. But then I was also reading something online that these actually don't have a super long shelf life. I think it's like three to 12 months. So you would think they would last forever, but it must be because of the fats they can oxidize. Um, so one positive is that they have low sugar, but they do have some car processed carbohydrates. Um, so we can go to the next slide. And I didn't know if you all wanted to see this, but it's only about two minutes long. So I thought we could just show if it works, Alexis, great. If not, we can skip it, but how ramen noodles are made. And there will be a little commercial, but it, the few times I've watched it, it wasn't too long. Can you all see it starting? Yes or no? It's buffering. Buffering, okay, but you can see the screen. Let's give it like 10 seconds, Alexis, if it doesn't work. Um, if you guys are tired later, you can watch two to three minutes on um, how ramen noodles are made. But basically it just shows the fry frying process. So we can turn it off, Alexis. It doesn't look like it's gonna stream. Thanks. Um, okay, so here are some fun facts. There's actually, um, I'll get to this fact in a minute, but there's actually a cup of noodles museum in Japan. And these are some images from the inside of the museum, but they were once considered a luxury grocery item. And I actually, we had a student in food science several years ago from Japan and her dream job was to go back and work in the ramen noodle production industry. Um, so she was actually going to grad school to learn more about like pasta and noodle production. China eats more instant ramen than any other country. Around 103 billion servings of instant noodles are eaten um, worldwide every year. They were invented in Japan and they didn't come to the US until 1970. So Top Ramen was the first ramen noodle company. Um, 
And then 1971, Nissan Foods introduced cup of noodles in a foam cup. And that's what also became um, popular worldwide. So that's the one that looks like this. Um, and according to one survey, they think the Japanese believe their best invention of the 20th century was instant noodles. Um, like I said, there's a cup of noodle museum in Osaka, Japan. They've made it to space. Um, they've been used by inmates in the United States prison system as currency. Um, the shelf life ranges from two to 12 months, and there are a lot of ways to elevate your instant ramen, which we'll talk about today. And so here are some simple ways to upgrade your ramen. And um, so one way to reduce sodium is to use your own broth. So one of the recipes will use our own broth, but um, instead of the little seasoning packet, but if you are young and sodium's not a problem with, for you, I would just say, go ahead and use the packet because that will save you money. But there are a million kinds of broths out there. Um, I raided my own pantry and also the grocery store to show you all. So you can just get your standard chicken broth or chicken stock. I think stock has a richer flavor. Um, if you're vegetarian or vegan, it's really easy to get vegetable stock. You can get beef broth. And if sodium is a concern, they even make unsalted or um, like Swanson makes this one low sodium. So you can get your broth in a can or one of these nice boxes. One reason I like these boxes is that you can just put it, the lid back on and keep it in the refrigerator for later use. Um, and they also have things like this better than bouillon. So it's more of a, let me see, more of a paste. It does cost a little more than regular bouillon, but you get um, a lot of servings. So this is a small one. This is 16 servings and you can get the bigger version um, with for 38 servings. So it does last a long time. And I did, um, Alexis does have some of the, um, the cubes which you can also unwrap and then it's one serving per, per cube. So I will say you really have to pay attention if you wanna reduce the sodium in your ramen to not use that packet and come up with your own sort of liquid or broth system. Um, you can buy prepared broth. This one was I think 38 cents. Whereas like the name brand was more, I think like a dollar, this one was a dollar. So you can prepare your noodles in your own broth um, you can make your ramen more filling by adding more protein. So we did experiment yesterday when we were practicing with canned chicken. So can, one can of chicken only has 110 calories. I always recommend rinsing it a little bit because it does have salty, uh, a salty flavor from being preserved, but it, it would add 23 grams of protein to your dish. You can add spices. So I always hoard these pizza, um, chili flakes because they're usually perfect for one recipe. So I'll use those today. You can add aromatics like ginger, garlic, green onions. So those are things that smell really great. You can add different kinds of sauces um, and you can add a lot of veggie, veggies and seasoning. So I find um, what I do a lot with mac and cheese or pasta, and I've started doing it with ramen the last couple of weeks preparing for this is um, mixing in. It's a great way to put leftover veggies like if you have like things from coleslaw and there's also a great ramen noodle coleslaw recipe if you google it that would use I think the packet and a pack of coleslaw and a pack of ramen. You can it's a great way for like bag spinach and then one thing I do a lot with the cups so these prepared cups or bowls is you can microwave it if you don't have access to a stove or an oven but you have access to like an electric tea kettle or um, I don't even know if they make them, but when I was in college, they used to be called hot pots. So it was just a pot you would plug in for boiling water. I guess it's an electric kettle. That's the fancier term. And then you can stir in. Um, so I love stirring in frozen mixed veggies. Um, if you don't feel like chopping onions or storing fresh food, you can have frozen onions and just take like the, what you need and keep it in the freezer and also frozen spinach. And so I also learned from my friend who works in the vegetable processing industry. So fruits and vegetables are only harvest one time a year. So what you see on the shelf all came from the one storage. So they're all harvested and cold stored. There's like very few different uh, companies that store these fruits and veggies. So it's okay to buy the store brand. Frozen fruits and veggies still retain almost all their nutrients. It's the same with frozen or fresh. When you cook it, that's where you can lose some of the nutrients. And um, 
Yeah, they last a long time and have a long shelf life. So what we were what we're seeing now in November and December are things that might have been harvested a year ago. So I think one of the issues, this is an aside that happens with COVID-19 is, you know, you, you can't just go get more. You have to wait for your harvest and then um, harvest your fruits and vegetables and freeze them and then distribute them. So you have to wait for a certain time of year. So that's why when there's um, prices go up when there's bad harvests because it's only it's a one time a year kind of deal. Um, and then I also bought some protein. So this will become important when you're preparing. You always want two cutting boards, one for your veggies and one for your protein. So you don't cross contaminate for food safety purposes. So another thing you could add in at the end would be cooked shrimp. So I found this bag of, it says 51 to 60, um, or 30 to 35 shrimp per bag. It was only $4 at Harps. So that's a way to add protein. You can add raw chicken, raw beef. I'm not gonna open these today, but if we were gonna cook with raw meat, we would add it at the beginning of the recipe when we're sauteing our vegetables. Um, and then it, you know, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, um, you can also add tofu to kick up your protein levels. So um, what's the next slide? Is that where we start? Oh no, getting started. So we'll need, um, if you decide to chop your vegetables, a cutting board and a knife, um, a teaspoon or a small kitchen spoon, um, a small or medium saucepan, spoons for stirring, and this a bowl or spoon and chop or spoon and chopsticks or chopsticks for eating. Um, a great place if you're new to cooking is the Dollar Tree. Um, all of these came from the Dollar Tree. You can get any kind of cooking gadget. You can get pans, you can get disposable um, saucepans. And um, yeah, it's a, great, it's a great place to stock your kitchen. Um, I'm gonna put some of these things away and then we can go ahead and get started just because it gives some more, more room in our tiny um, food science kitchen. So let's see, what's the next? Oops. I think it's the, the recipe might be next. And the video started playing in the background on my computer. I was like, whoa, okay. Um, okay, so we found two recipes. Um, this first one comes from um, a website called Budget Bite. So I see some people that sometimes attend our defend calls. Um, this is a great website. It's always about you using everything in your pantry and keeping costs low. So we'll start the demonstration. I'm going to cook everything in a saucepan because we tried it in a frying pan yesterday and it was a little more difficult. We'll try cooking an egg at the end. So we'll use um, the saucepan so the broth is higher. And what it calls for is starting with a half of a tablespoon of cooking oil. Um, so this is one way where you can save fat or incorporate more healthy fat. So you can use olive oil, but olive oil does cost more, um, but it will have some healthy, healthy fats. Um, you can also use cooking spray, which will have really few calories, no calories. And especially if you're using something like a nonstick pot or pan or just plain vegetable oil. So this um, recipe calls for vegetable oil. And I should ask before we get started, does anyone have questions about the nutrition part? Because you can always ask, I guess, when we're, we have to boil some water. Okay. I don't mind being interrupted, so it's okay if you. So I'm going to start with this half a tablespoon of cooking oil and get my oven going. I learned yesterday was the first time I've used this oven in the lab or the stove and it cooks really fast. Um, and then I guess one tip I did learn from my lipid chemists in my department, you always wanna store your cooking oils um, in a dark, cool place away from heat because the fats can oxidize and then your um, cooking oils won't last as long. Um, and so then we're gonna go with one clove of garlic um, or more if you like garlic like I do, you can just go for it. So there's two options. You can buy a bulb of garlic, and I know at the end Alexis has pri priced this out, so this can be pretty cheap. I think I got three for a dollar at Aldi, 
And one clove is just one of these little pieces here. I can open it up and show you why the oil's heating. I couldn't find the price on walmart.com for the cloves or the, the heads of garlic. I only found the jars. This, I, these I bought three in a little bag at Aldi. And I think they're like 28 to 33 cents for a bulb at, um, in the fresh produce at Walmart. And I, at Harps, they were a little more expensive, maybe like 40 or 50 cents for one bulb. So one clove would just be one little part, but you also want to make sure you remove um, the from the outside and um, chop it really nicely. Um, there are great YouTube tutorials for it. I'm not going to show you um, right now. I always cheat when my husband's not looking because he's Italian, so he gets upset if it's not fresh. Um, and he always says he can tell, but it's been like 10 years and he hasn't said anything. Um, so I use this minced garlic and water because you can keep it in your fridge and it lasts a long time. And then you can just open it up and take what you need. So this one says one clove. So that's about one teaspoon. Um, and I usually do a heaping teaspoon because I really like garlic. And yesterday I, it was hard to taste it with the one teaspoon. So I'm just going to give it like two teaspoons because I'm in here by myself. No one's going to smell my breath later. Um, and then it calls for um, a half a teaspoon of grated fresh ginger. So I don't have a grate here, so I just use my knife to chop everything finely. If you've never had fresh ginger, it kind of looks like a scary root at the grocery store. This one kind of looks like an elephant. Um, and here's a different one I bought. And I've seen people, like if you don't need this much ginger, you can break off a piece, put it in your little, you know, grocery storage bag and pay for just what you need. The nice thing about ginger and with cloves of garlic is you can freeze them and just take out what you need um, when you're cooking. So this is what the inside of the ginger root looks like. So I just cut it in half and then I used a knife to slice off all this like root skin. And that's how you come up with ginger. I'm, or with the ginger for the recipe, but I'm not sure, um, like if you have ground ginger that you use in cooking, I'm not sure how that would work in this recipe, but I'm sure it would just be fine. You would just have to figure out the conversion to fresh. So I've already um, chopped some ginger. So I'm gonna add my ginger, kind of looks like garlic when it's all chopped to my pot. And I added a lot more ginger too, because I really like ginger. Um, so you can kind of see of course, yesterday it cooked really fast and today it's kind of cooking slow, but I have everything in my saucepan and I'll just get it going with some heat. And so after it heats, so it would be around this time that I would add, if I was going to add raw chicken or beef or pork or raw shrimp, I would add it in with this cooking oil in these aromatics to get, um, get it seasoned and cooked before adding everything else. And I would not add salt because we are preparing to have a ton of salt in our ramen. Um, so this is just an example of some of the other things I've prepared. We'll use the spinach um, in the next recipe, but I just took this from a bag of spinach I'd use for a salad. Some of the leftover coleslaw mix, we'll add that into this recipe. I had a few mushrooms left over and just odds and ends. And pre-COVID, when you could go to a salad bar, this would be a perfect thing is just mix and match some things for a salad bar. So I did buy these shredded carrots, pre-shredded, matchstick, because I knew I'd be doing a demo and I'm not that great at cutting, um, but it's way cheaper. You can get a giant three pound bag of carrots for a dollar. You would just have to peel them and slice them yourself. So um, our aromatics are sizzling. And I think now it says we should add, um, our veggies. So I'm going to add in my mushrooms. I like, so I never follow the recipe. I add a little more. And since this is going to make, I think this can make one big serving or two smaller servings. So I'll just add in my mushrooms. And then I'm going to add in um, some leftover bell pepper that I have and some of these carrots. So uh, this is a great way if you had leftover zucchini. Um, 
I mean, I like I really don't like celery, so I wouldn't add it. But celery is another inexpensive vegetable that would add some crunch to your ramen noodles. Um, and also, I had a little bit of broccoli left over, so I'll dump that in. And then a little bit of this coleslaw or this cabbage. So then it becomes a, a soup that has around two servings of fresh vegetables, or you can add frozen. So I think with frozen, you have to be careful because it does have water, adds a little water content. So you would add it um, after you have your broth boiling. So I think, what does it say here? So we'll bring, next, we'll have them cook for about a minute. It already smells better, Alexis, than yesterday. So that's a positive. Good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, more aromatic, I should say. It didn't smell terrible. It just, you couldn't smell the garlic or the ginger. So then in order to reduce sodium in this recipe, and this is a vegetarian based recipe that we found online. She adds a cup of water and then, um, I think I'll just use, she uses vegetable broth. So I'll make it vegetarian. And then a cup of vegetable broth. So that reduces, so she throws away the ramen noodle pack but not the pack, the noodles, the spices or the mix. So because this one has been sitting in my pantry, creamy chicken for like six months, I'm going to use, um, throw away the seasoning packet of this one and use these noodles. Because to make that coleslaw, I think you just need regular chicken, not creamy chicken. Um, so yeah, by taking this out, this is where most of that sodium comes from in these little packets. But again, if you're not concerned, it does save you money. Use the broth that's in here. And it calls for one packet of seasoning for two cups of water after you boil the noodles. You can either just add half the pack um, to, to your two cups of water. Okay, so it's going. I'm gonna add my water, my veggies. The broccoli still looks a little crisp, but it should soften. Um, I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So a cup of water and then a cup of this vegetable broth. I think Alexa, Alexis had said maybe like beef broth would also be good. And the picture here is what it looked like at the end. That must have been done by a food photographer because we did not have such beauty, but we did have good taste. Ours wasn't that watery, but no. I guess if you add more water with the stock, then that should help. Uh, she may have only used like half a serving of noodles. Uh -huh. And this is a total aside, but once I was reading a, our, an expose on the Food Network, and apparently Giada De Laurentiis is the biggest offender of food that looks great in pictures, but tastes terrible. Hmm. So it made me feel better because I was trying to make something of hers and it was, it wasn't good. Okay, so I'll turn this up. So after you add your water, you want to get it boiling and then that's when you add your noodles. So, um, Crack the egg into the broth. So we will let this boil and then we will, um, you can crack an egg and that will add around seven grams of protein and some healthy fats. So that's a good source of protein if you're vegetarian. Um, the tofu she uses, she got, off, I was reading, she bought off a salad bar and it has like a teriyaki flavor. The tofu I found at Harps is just plain tofu. So I'm not gonna add it because I don't, you may have to like pre-prepare um, it. And then, yeah, we'll just let it boil. So I'll show you what it looks like. Looks like vegetable soup. So you can see that. And I don't know, Alexa, or Alexis, I keep saying Alexa, because my son and I were playing with Alexa all day today. Um, will you forward to the, maybe the price slide while we're sitting here waiting? So these are some of the prices for the ingredients. So it look, does look kind of expensive, but when you actually buy what you need, it goes down um, a lot. So like the spinach is for the entire bag, but we just used a cup. And always, if you buy things outside of the package, it's gonna cost less like in bulk than, um, than when you buy packaged food. But I wanted to make sure it also saved food safe when I brought it to our lab. So while this is waiting, I'm going to prepare the water for the other recipe. And we're just going to prepare a ramen noodle. Um, so you can go back, Alexis. Let's just go. Um, 
to the ingredients. The ingredients. So all the different ingredients you can use. You can see my ramen noodle supply tripled. So but yesterday we just tried ramen noodles with chicken. I think I'll just try this like picante chicken flavor. So in this one, we are gonna use the seasoning and we'll just boil the two cups of water. So in our practice demo yesterday, we used canned chicken and it does taste like chicken. I've never had it before, but it's got a stringy texture like tuna does. So that was a little, yeah, that was different. Little, and I think maybe had we sauteed it first, instead of just dumping it in, mm -hmm. it could have gotten some less canned flavor. But at the same time, it is 23 grams of protein. Protein, And I think what one can was $1.10 or $1.20, depending on the brand you bought. So um, and then when you add seasoning, it's not too bad. But it does have a lot of sodium. So you want to make sure if you're using canned chicken, you rinse it. And you can pat it dry. That will help it um, saute better. And um, watch what the amount of sodium you're adding for your broth. So I just added two cups of water to this other saucepan while we're getting ready. And I just, you're just gonna follow, oh, this is the creamy chicken one, follow the directions on the back of the package. So we'll boil two cups of water, cook the noodles for three minutes, stir in the flavor packet, and then get exciting with some additional ingredients. Um, and the second recipe we're going to make would be super easy if you just have an electric kettle and you're making ramen that way. And it would be a great recipe if you just are using something like the cup of noodles. You can prepare your cup of noodles according to the directions, which I think you can use the microwave and then take this and use a bowl and follow the same steps. You could probably do that one totally with the microwave if you had a microwave safe bowl that you could Make the water hot enough. You could just prepare it in that. What does it say? Oh, this one has a little less calories. It only has 300 calories and about 600 milligrams less sodium. Where are the directions? I think you have to open it. So, this one, you would boil water in a separate container. Oh, it says don't microwave the cup. Some of them you can microwave. <laughs> Um, so this one, you could use a tea kettle, you would boil the water, add it, close the lid, let it sit for three minutes. And when it's done cooking, you would then do what we're going to do here and add it toward to your um, vegetable. And... Okay, so our broth is boiling. We're going to add in our noodles. It smells good. Oops. And then set the timer for three minutes. I want to make sure these get submerged. I think you could put a lid on it too if it's not. And so in the recipe, we're gonna we're gonna add an egg. The person who shared this online actually pre-soft boiled her eggs, but I didn't want to embarrass myself by having you guys watch me try to peel a hard boiled egg because I'm not talented at that. Okay, let's see. Three minutes. Setting my timer. So we'll just let this boil. And you can see what it looks like. And so really this is a great, depending on your herbs, it's a great way. Um, you can so you don't even have to make this sort of Asian flavored. You can just use regular chicken noodle soup and add vegetables. Um, probably adding some soy sauce, again, high in sodium, but they do make low light sodium soy sauce to give um, some vegetables. You can also try stir frying everything in sesame oil, but sesame oil is really expensive and it comes, um, it goes bad faster. I've noticed. Um, so yeah, we have about two minutes left on our noodles. So it said don't overcook, but I think what I'm going to do is add in the egg because I think last time the noodles got super soggy by waiting for our egg to cook. Um, where'd I put the eggs? Over here. Does anyone have any questions while we wait? So if 
you've never poached an egg, you just take the egg, let's see if I can get it, crack it, and slowly release it into your broth. It should just fall there. And then don't touch it or it will break. And then it will start to cook. Um, it will start to cook. And then eventually you can get, like if you saw the picture, it, they, she had like a soft boiled egg. So you can, as soon as the yolk or the, the white is cooked, you can make it the yolk as runny as you want. And then the second recipe will try, you actually stir an egg in, which gives your ramen a really creamy texture and flavor. So it said six minutes for the egg to cook. Let's see, there's like a minute left here. Let me, um... and so this is the time if I was gonna add these, um, I'll put them away. If I was gonna add the pre-cooked frozen shrimp, I would also add them in with my ramen. Or if I didn't have any fresh vegetables on hand, I would have, I would just have done like my seasonings and the oil, added the broth, the noodles, and then while the noodles are boiling, also add in my frozen, frozen vegetables. So yeah, so you can kind of see now the egg is starting to cook. It's right here. Let's see if I can get it without burning my computer. Um, I'm gonna try the other side. You can see the egg and it's starting to get like a pocket. The egg whites are starting to cook. It does not look as beautiful as this lady's here on TV or on the screen. <laughs> but I will say, if you've ever seen Nailed It on um, Netflix, I feel like I'm the cook version of the baking. So like it normally tastes okay, but it looks not good. So I appreciate you for silently judging me instead of judging me. So I'm gonna just try to like scoop some of the broth on top of here, but I don't have a ladle. Just so the top of the egg gets cooked. Um, okay, so that's still cooking. And so our other water is starting to boil. I think it says four mi more minutes on the egg. And so it is important to cook that egg because you don't want salmonella. Um, that'd be terrible to make yourself sick from ramen. Um, okay, it's getting there. It's getting there, guys. Is there a difference in the nutrition facts, I guess, of an egg when you poach it versus when you scramble it or fry it? Well, I think it depends on your cooking medium. Okay. So if you're going to fry an egg and you're going to use butter or bacon grease, for sure that's going to add saturated fat and calories. Um, if you have a nonstick pan, cause they like technology has come a long way. Like this is a target brand pan. You could probably cook the egg in here. What are they ceramic pans? And it would just cook without oil or use cooking spray. Um, poaching it. Normally if you were to poach an egg like, or you were to go to a diner and ask for a poached egg, I would say that's one of the healthier options because they're going it, to, it's poached in hot water. Um, I guess sometimes there's also like basted, where I think maybe it's in water, but you keep basting the egg. Um, my husband used to work, he managed a Bob Evans, which is no longer open in Rogers when we first moved here. And I learned all about like the six million ways you can ask for eggs at Bob Evans. So I think poached though should be using water to get it. And it's getting, I'll show you guys. It's like a nice little, oh, I flipped it. See, nailed it. <laughs> um, you can see that it's starting to get solid. So if you like runny yolks, you could stop it now. I'm gonna flip it over and let the other, the yolk part cook. So our other noodles are boiling and it's perfect because we have about three minutes left on this. So I'm just gonna drop, or our water's boiling, I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna drop these noodles in. And it seems to be regardless of brand, three minutes. Must be that frying process. Submerge them a little bit, get them soft, let them go. Okay, so that one is picante, spicy. Okay, so this one, I should probably add a minute just for food safety. Um, 
Okay, so I think actually this one looks done. I'm gonna leave my egg a little runny. So I'll turn it off. Um, and I'm gonna just dump it all. It's hard to see, but I don't, I like using a microwave for a stand here. Um, I'll just dump everything into the pot. And the egg is on top. It looks like something from Halloween. There. Um, okay, so it looks like Daddy. like half a spoon. So I have to get out a plastic spoon. Let's see what I have in my because I wanted to say in Australia they're called two minute noodles so they must cook a minute faster down under. Yeah maybe it's that south of the equator water boil stuff. Eh, that made no sense. Okay so this is what it looks like. So does it looks I think it looks better than our pilot run. It definitely does. It was combining and it was super salty yesterday and here's kind of what that egg looked like. Oops I'm making a mess. So it is partially cooked. Let me try to open it. And I like mine a little runny, so you can see it's a little bit runny. So this cooked for about five minutes. And I don't have a regular spoon, so I'm just going to try this with my um, free McAllister's serving spoon from some sort of catering event that I took from the U of A. That's good. And it's not too salty, but it could probably use more garlic and ginger. Either that or I have COVID because I can't taste it. Oh no. I'm just kidding. I don't think I have COVID. Okay. That's the timer. It's actually really good. And if you mix in the egg, it gets really creamy. So I think it's just missing. Like I love the taste of ginger. So I think it just needs more ginger. So maybe ginger powder or powdered ginger would add a stronger flavor to that. But the vegetables are good. Let's try the egg. That's way better than yesterday. Okay, good. So I bet if I cooked it twice more, it would even start to look better too. Okay, so this one's done. I'm gonna turn off the uh, stove and stir in my Takante chicken packet that came with it. So the beauty of this recipe, is if you can get your thingy open, is that you can do whatever flavor you want. And I'm actually really curious to try the soy sauce one sometime this week. Um, so just stir it up. I think we can turn off the, uh, I did turn off the stove. So this one I'm using a clear bowl because that's what I watched in the YouTube demo. I'm gonna take my spinach and spinach is an awesome leafy green um, because it wilts really easily. So it looks really full now, but this heat will make it reduce in size. You just add your ramen, let it wilt the spinach. And then, so this is, can be for one or two people. So if it was two people, the spinach doesn't add many calories. This would, if it was one person, this would be about a 400 calorie meal. Let's see, yeah, cause this was 370 calories, but then you add in an egg. So I think if you were serving this to two people, you could add in two eggs. So instead of boiling it, you just crack your egg directly into your soup, break up the yolk and stir it until it's cooked. And then you have this like really creamy, like if you use the chicken one, if you've ever had egg drop soup at a restaurant, a kind of Chinese restaurant, it tastes kind of like that. I'm making a mess here. And I can show you closer. And this one does kind of look like it, except I broke up the yolk already. So I think if you leave this for maybe three minutes, also so you don't burn your mouth, the egg should get pretty cooked. Um, you can see now the white still kind of um, jelly looking. But yeah, you just stir it in and then you can see it was a clear broth. I should have shown you that and now it's more of a creamy rich broth. So we'll let that sit for a couple minutes. So again, if I was just gonna make ramen noodles and I do this a lot on my own with mac and cheese, 
or just pasta noodles, or if I have ramen, I'll just throw in whatever leftover veggies I have um, that maybe I don't want to eat raw anymore. And, um, or a cup of like frozen fruits or veg, or not fruits, frozen veggies, like frozen spinach or frozen, I love frozen mixed vegetables. Um, and go to town. And so if I was just going to use spaghetti, if I really was watching my um, sodium intake, I would just take some of this low sodium broth, boil my noodles in the broth, and then with a few minutes left on the cooking time, add in like a half a cup to a cup of frozen mixed veggies or spinach. Um, and then if you wanted to add some healthy fat in that situation, you could also drizzle a little olive oil on top. And another good thing for those pizza packets, like if you take the Parmesan, oh, I forgot to add the chilies. So I was, my plan was to take one of these packets because it's about a teaspoon and add the chilies when we were sauteing the garlic and the ginger to make it spicy, but I forgot. But also the Parmesan ones are really good. If you take spaghetti, boil it in chicken broth, add veggies, and then at the end, put a little olive oil in, sprinkle those Parmesan packets. Um, so don't throw them away if you get them with your frozen pizza. Oh, and then I forgot, another thing you can do to make either of these pop is add like, some fresh coriander or cilantro. And um, I love radishes, so I chopped up some radishes and green onion, and you can sprinkle that on the top. And this totally becomes a meal big enough for two people. So you can see now, like this one looks little fancier with the veggies on top. This was the recipe number one. And um, especially if you add your canned chicken or chicken or beef, that one would definitely be enough for two people. And then your ramen, your simpler ramen with the egg stirred into the broth or to the, with the spinach in the soup. Let's see what this tastes like. Mm, that's good. I think it's the flavor you choose makes the difference, Alexis way better with picante chicken than with plain chicken. So yeah, so any questions? Anyone live close to Don Tyson building that wants to eat some ramen? <laughs> um, yeah, so this was fun. Thanks for inviting me. Hopefully you guys got some ideas with what you can do with ramen. And don't be ashamed if it doesn't look great. It still tastes good. That was awesome, Dr. Brown. Ramen is my guilty pleasure, and now it's not quite. So, so have you tried this one? I'm sure this one is like the soy sauce one yet. No. I've heard from some ramen aficionados that this one is really good. I always go with chicken. I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Oh, well, my new, and also like now, because I watch Korean soap operas on Netflix, um, they're always eating ramen like features prominently in a lot of these soap operas. So they were eating kimchi instant ramen and that's what made me go online to see if I could find my own kimchi ramen. And so yeah, I ended up buying a 12 pack of these online and they only lasted like four weeks in my house. But I started eating it with like frozen mixed, but my favorite thing is to stir in frozen spinach or frozen mixed vegetables. I hadn't even thought of this egg idea and that was really good. But here you go, spicy kimchi flavor. It is, if you like spicy, it's enough to make you feel spicy, but not sweat. Mm -hmm. Highly recommended. And like when I was in college, I used to eat the shrimp one. I haven't had one of those in like 22 years or something. And then, like I said, ramen is up to its game. Like, I don't even know what this, this one is, shin black, but it's a spicy flavor. So. But this was not with the ramen in the soup aisle. This was with the Asian grocery part of the aisle. Same with these little Thai ones. I bet this one is good, this spring onion one. So yeah, and then I bought this one because this I think was a dollar. And it's more like a dish. And this would be a great candidate for stirring in frozen veggies. Would we have to thaw or cook the vegetables before we added them? Or just add them because it's hot enough? Microwave on high for five minutes. You add water, take out sauce packet, add water. I think it would be hot enough that you could stir in the frozen veggies and let it sit. 
and then you could always stir them in and if they don't melt just like stick it in for another minute so that's one reason i like like these ones like especially if you're like going to class i mean pre-covid um or you're on the go or even at work like you don't need special appliances you just need water in a microwave <laughs> apparently this one's the exception you're probably melted because it said don't put it in the microwave but you could just bring a bowl and one time i like recently i just have one of those thermoses that keeps things hot i just made kimchi ramen and put my frozen vegetables in and then they melted like or thawed during the day but yeah so any any questions um, about how much like uh what's the word tofu about how much tofu would you recommend putting in or like substituting for like the large egg or instead of the um chicken so let's see i am not as familiar with tofu and i know um with tofu you can also if you buy the soft one you could probably stir it in and make it creamy like an egg this one is the extra firm so this says Three ounces, which is one serving of protein, only has 45 calories. An egg has 70 calories. And it has the same amount of protein, so seven grams of protein. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And this is four servings. Okay. So um, just a quarter of this box would only have 30, 45 calories and seven grams of protein. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. And I guess because I'm inexperienced with it, this one says, because it's firm for it's hard to see for stir fry or sauteing. So my guess is when you were like, if you were at your chili flakes or maybe, oh, I also bought like sriracha, something like that at the beginning, you could stir fry this and then add everything. And but okay, yeah. close, so you would stir fry it, remove it, boil everything and then add it back on top. Okay, awesome, thank you. But, and Are if you were to eat this whole package, it's only 180 calories. You might have a but Are they? 140. Oh, sorry, Alexis, I keep no, Are there any similar vegetable substitutions that have a close amount of protein? Um, oh, I forgot one thing that's plant-based. So I think soybeans have a lot of protein, like so you could maybe add some edamame. And I think you can get some places shelled frozen edamame, the beans, but you can also, I think Walmart sells like the whole edamame pod. So you could steam them and then put the beans in there. Um, you can also, if you're vegetarian or even just for fun for crunch and I guess salt, um, add a spoonful of peanuts. You can also like in your broth, if you want to go for like a Thai type flavor, stir in coconut milk a little bit, but coconut milk is, um, calorie energy dense, but I bought, they make a light one now. So this container is five servings and one serving is 50 calories. It does have four grams of saturated fat. So it doesn't help your situation with your ramen noodles, but it would give you like, especially if you squ squeezed in a lime and some cilantro, it would give you um, a lot of flavor and, and make it a fancier meal. You can also buy, they sell a lot of curry paste. They sell, this one was from the only thing they had at hearts but walmart you walmart on joyce has a lot of variety in sort of in this cooking aisle and the curry paste and you could probably use curry powder you would just have to figure out how much um this would give you like a nice curry soup and they have green curry paste too um so yeah i think though you know like you guys are young so sodium may not be as big of an issue especially since you're the exercises medicine group, I'm assuming you're drinking lots of water and working out a lot. So you'll pee that sodium right out. <laughs> but um, for those of us like myself who are comfortably setting into their 40s, sodium, like that stuff, like one pack of ramen kind of impacts me for a week with all the sodium. But I love it anyway. So, um, so yeah, it's, this was fun. And it's actually really hard to find recipes for repurposing ramen, mm -hmm. healthy recipes. And if you do have time, I highly recommend looking at the ramen coleslaw 
it's delicious. Um, you have to buy some sort more ingredients and you could add chicken and it would be even better or tofu or just plain or anything that comes with sliced almonds. It's, it's really good. But I didn't make it because I would eat like the entire bowl once we hung up the camera. So I, <laughs> for my own self-preservation, I did not make that flaw. Any questions, anyone else have ideas that they have done with ramen? I love I had frozen peas. Mm. I love frozen peas. Yes. Any regular ramen eaters? Like for sure me. Yeah. I will say like my heart broke a little bit when I learned that the noodles were fried. And I felt a little bit betrayed by my ramen. I always thought the fat came from those seasoning packets. <laughs> and maybe a little bit does, but who knew? But yeah, it's, um, I think especially with quarantine, I don't know if you guys went to the grocery store, like right when social distancing started, it was impossible to find ramen. Mm -hmm. Like that stuff cleared the shelves. And like, I'm a fan of my local Sam's Club on social media. And when they would get ramen back in stock, like they'd send out a alert and it would be gone. So I think because it's an expensive, you know, right now we have a lot of people losing their jobs. Um, so budget becomes an issue. So I think this is also really timely, Alexis. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's a good way to hide your leftover veggies. So you also have less food waste. Yeah, that's it. Awesome, thank you so much for coming and joining us, Dr. Baum. Um, if there's no more questions, then you can email me and